yourself and proceed when you're ready. We see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Curtis Bingham, and I'm with the Washington Civil Rights Association. I urge you to oppose House Bill 1283. Very similar legislation has already been weaponized against people of color, which led to mass arrests and charges against political targets. The Mulford Act was signed into law in California on July 28, 1967. It criminalized the open carry of firearms in public places. At the time, black civil rights groups across the U.S. and in the state of California were fighting for the rights to be treated as equals and granted access to the same institutions and opportunities as whites. They were suffering from police brutality without accountability or consequence. Black people established community patrols to monitor police and community leader activities and hold them accountable for their misdeeds. This group of armed citizens pre presented a threat to the white establishment. The bill's sponsor boasted of his intent to sabotage the civil rights movement by disarming African Americans. While technically the legislation applied to everyone, it was very selectively applied to the minority groups the legislators and police were the most afraid of. The group's members were explicitly targeted and arrested en masse for exercising their civil rights. Racism is not over. This bill is a terrible step backwards to a mistake that has already been made. It is easily weaponized, just like it before. In this bill, the only mens rea considered is, is that of the, feeling, the person that's feeling threatened. There are no guidelines as to what will be deemed reasonable, and I can all but guarantee that the race, the gender, the homelessness status, the sexual orientation of the carriers will be utilized to justify why a fear might be reasonable. The largest victims of this legislation will be the minority communities, just like they were 54 years ago. I urge you not to repeat the mistakes of the recent past by passing this out of committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bingham. Uh, let's hear from Jessica Zielinski. I saw you a moment ago, so please unmute yourself and proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Jessica Zielinski, and I live in the 31st Legislative District. I am representing myself and three young children, and I urge you to oppose House Bill 1283. As a female person of color, I am 15 times more likely to be a victim of violent crime. I carry a firearm daily, not only to protect myself, but my three young children. After a pregnancy that ended in a C-section, I couldn't car conceal carry for medical reasons, even if I wanted to. This bill makes a it a felony offense for me to legally and safely openly carry if someone around me feels fearful, no matter how responsibly or safely I carry my firearm. I know this law will be weaponized against minorities because something similar has already happened to me on my own property. I live on a rural farm with a predatory animal problem. My family regularly open carries on my property while doing chores to defend my livestock against predators. A neighbor with malicious intent called the police on me telling me that he was afraid because I open carry and I wear a camouflage coat while caring for my livestock. Proposals such as this are used against people of color. An example would be when Amy Cooper, a white woman who called 911 on a black man, falsely claimed that he was trying to assault her. She was walking her dog and Christian Cooper, a bird watcher, told her he needed a dog on a leash. She called 911 and told them there's an African American man threatening my life. Amy Cooper engaged in racist criminal conduct using police as her offense. These kind of bills are designated to intimidate people of color. Amy, this bill will only make such racist criminal conduct more common, and I urge you to oppose this bill and not advance it out of committee. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, Ms. Zelensky. Uh, let's hear from Sharon Hinchcliffe, please. I appear to be having video problems, so I hope the, okay. the, we the committee... And, yep, we can hear you loud and clear, so go Excellent. ahead. Excellent. Uh, good morning, Chairman Hanson, committee members. Thank you for hearing my testimony this morning. Um, I am Sharon Hinchcliffe, District 27, one of the three admins for the Pink Pistol Seattle and Tacoma, founding member of the Western Washington National African American Gun Association. Pink Pistols Seattle Tacoma is opposed to HB 1283. This this bill will join the additional laws that target marginalized and minority communities by intentionally fostering aggressive and oppressive environments where the police are weaponized by ignorant or malicious anti-civil rights gun control prohibitionists. This bill targets those who, by nothing other than their color, religion, or who they love, with the aggressive police interaction due to the 911 calls of, quote, the black man with the gun stereotype 
walking. This bill does not delineate between a protest or anything else. Three men can be talking. Three members of the National African American Gun Association in Western Washington can be holding a discussion while they have their rifles after they've uh, been out shooting, while they are discussing something before they put them in their vehicles and be called the police on them. This bill targets them. This bill targets members of the Pink Pistols and other such. We are at Pride every year with a booth promoting actual firearm safety regulations and ability to defend yourself from crime, from hate crime. This bill does nothing to address the actual gun violence. Gun violence is the majority is by suicide. That is addressed in other bills that are already being heard of in these committees. So this bill does nothing. It criminalizes the ability of the individual to defend themselves. This bill criminalizes the person walking down the street with two other individuals open carrying a firearm, which is legal in this state at this time. If anybody has any questions, I am open to any uh, to any committee members. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thank you, Ms. Hinchcliffe. Uh, the ranking member has a question. Please, sir, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Hinchcliffe, I, I have a really a sort of philosophical question for you. When one person's feelings conflict with another person's constitutional rights, which should prevail? Civil rights and constitutional rights uh, always prevail. Otherwise, you have the incidents of Loving v. Virginia, where people have the personal opinions that you could not have interracial marriages. And it took the U.S. Constitu Supreme Court of the United States to overturn the Virginia ruling that you could not have people of mixed, ra of mixed races getting marriage. The Constitution supersedes everything. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hitchcliffe. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, let's hear from the next set of testifiers. Madam Vice Chair. I'm going to call up Nico Paddle, Rabbi.